Ahead of their home Grand Prix in France, Renault have kindly invited us to their UK base in Enstone to give Sky F1 viewers an exclusive behind the scenes look at their revamped factory. They spent over 50 million euros. The question is, will it get them back to championship winning ways? I started uh, in early Benetton days. Um, so obviously it was much smaller. I think it was, I don't know, probably 250 people. Um, you know, now we're 700 people here. And I've seen all the factory develop and the, the equipment develop. But I think the energy in the last three years has been really special. There's a real racing spirit here, that, that's for sure. You know, we're a racing team. We, 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 did, we don't do anything else here other than make racing cars. So this is normally, well, at least on a race day, a hive of activity. Just tell us what goes on in here. It's full of people, 24 people here, uh, not only during the race, but during the whole uh, race weekend, supporting them. And by support, what do they actually do? Basically, they're the link between the people at the track and the people at the factory. So not only they support the people at the track by looking at the data, helping them with the setup, but also when we have an issue, they're the link with the people at the factory. All the little buttons you see, they call the intercom to communicate with the driver and between the engineers, so they're connected directly. Yeah, if you could just uh, get them to overtake the two Red Bulls, that would be a real help. Thank you. That's the mute button, by the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to talk to the driver, you have to press here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> now, this is the very epicentre of Renault and we've come to the design office to meet the composites designer. Maria here, got to keep our voices down because people are concentrating very hard. How many people work here, Maria? About 50 changes uh, throughout the year. During Carpool we've got a few more people. We have a composites design group, a mechanical group and gearbox group and uh, all kind of work together and help out when need be. Okay, so we're coming to uh, the simulator. Actually there's a test ongoing. Jack Aitken is, uh, is running the car. Here we have our uh, driving simulator. So the driver sits in a real chassis, been modified to, to work with our simulator. And through that, he feels all the bumps and movement of real car would feel. Will Nico and Daniel come here before a race if they want to familiarise themselves with, a, with say, a new circuit? Uh, most races they do, um, especially if it's a new circuit, they'll definitely come in, uh, not just to help them learn the track, it's also to help the engineers find a good starting setup and to uh, kind of understand what works well at a new track. I'm here in Composites Machining and I'm going to join a very clever man called Ian Pearce, who's head of production, who tells me that I might be able to help create a part that will actually go on the car in France. This is uh, a front wing end plate for the French Grand Prix. So if you would like to press the flashing green button, you can set the machine going. Now what you've got to hope is that when Cyril is on the pit wall with Sky Sports F1 at the weekend, he doesn't come over and say, we have had a problem with the front wing end plate. Where are we now? It's called Advanced Digital Manufacturing. It's basically 3D printing. We're doing most of the parts for the wind tunnel model. So you see there's a little uh, laser that dries the, uh, the resin and it could print Amazing. a car. Uh, it doesn't have any other function than uh, look cool. Would that break if I pulled it? It would, okay, so do don't. <laughs> we could design a part today and test it in a tunnel tomorrow afternoon, for example. Oh, wow. It's absolutely massive. And this is seriously impressive, if a little sinister. It feels like we're in a Bond movie or something. Yeah, so you're in the wind tunnel. Obviously not the part where we test the model. This is the fan. This is what accelerates the airflow uh, through the test section. And it's basically a, a tube angled, so it's like, it looks like a square from above, and the airflow circulates around it, accelerated by the fan, and there's a model on the belt that rolls to simulate the road under the car, and this is how we test the aerodynamics of the real car. The wind just gushes through here, hits those wind vanes and speeds around yeah, the corner. Exactly, the, the turning vanes you see there are actually turning the air around the corners, and by, by doing this it's more efficient because we accelerate the air so we can test the, the car in a representative condition. What kind of speeds are we talking? So 50 metres per second, that's around 150 kilometres per hour. So if they turned it on now we'd be in a bit of trouble? But we'll be squashed against the turning vanes there. Oops. Our target is to get to be able to fight for wins in 21. We know the car's good, we know the driver's good, and we're starting now to realise the, the, the benefits of the investment. Well, what a fantastic insight. It's been a genuine privilege to be here in the inner sanctum of Renault. And just as we're clocking off, the night shift are arriving because 
you do want to get back to winning races, it needs to be a 24-7 operation.